all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord. They offered sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord. And there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. 1 Samuel eleven fifteen. Dear God, you are so strong, powerful, and wise. Help us to remember how safe we are in your hands and how much bigger you are than anyone or anything. There is nothing you can't do. Thank you for teaching us today what it means to fear and to respect you. We're so happy to be in your family. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for praying with us today. The Kids Bible in a Year podcast is sponsored by Little Passports, delivering monthly activity kit subscriptions that help kids explore the world, cultivate curiosity, and discover new interests with hands-on crafts and activities in cooking, science, crafts, and more, all with a unique cultural twist. Visit littlepassports.com blessed to learn more and save 20% with code blessed. Saul's victory over the Ammonites. In our last story, we learned how Saul became the first king of Israel. In this story, we will learn how Saul defeats the Ammonites, and at Gilgal, the people accepted Saul as king, as inspired by the book of 1 Samuel. Hey everyone, Joya Sadler here, and it's time for another story. Thanks for listening to the Kids Bible in a Year podcast. Today we will hear Samuel get really angry, a good kind of angry, and help Israel defeat their enemies. We're going to learn a lot from God's people too, and is going to end with one giant party. Let's listen in and see what's making Saul so angry. There was an army from the nation called Ammon. The people were called Ammonites. The Ammonites came to a city that was in the nation of Israel. The Ammonites wanted to battle the city and take it over. The city leaders wanted to surrender and negotiate with the Ammonites. The city leaders wanted a peace treaty. The king of the Ammonites said, We will negotiate with you. We will give you a peace treaty if you allow us to pluck out everyone's right eye. This will greatly disgrace all of Israel. The city leaders told the Ammonites to wait seven days because they needed time to think. During the seven days, the city leaders sent out messengers to look for help from the other cities and towns in Israel. When the messengers came to Saul's town, they told everyone what the Ammonites wanted to do. All the people began to cry. Saul was working in a field when the news came, and when he came into town, he was confused. Saul said, Why is everyone crying? The people of the town told Saul what the Ammonites wanted to do. The situation seemed hopeless. When Saul heard this, the Spirit of God rushed Saul just like it did in the past, and Saul became very angry. Saul sent out a message to all the people of Israel and threatened them to fight with him. Saul wanted to protect a city of Israel and did not want Israel to become disgraced. Samuel also came to help Saul. When the people of Israel heard Saul's message, a different type of fear filled them. The fear of the Lord filled the people, just like how the Spirit of God rushed Saul. By the time all the people gathered together, there were 330,000 men ready to fight with Saul and Samuel. Saul sent messengers to tell the city leaders that an army was coming. In Saul's message, he said, by tomorrow afternoon, you will be saved. The city that was negotiating with the Ammonites were glad to hear the message. The city leaders decided to trick the Ammonites so that Saul's plan could work. The city leaders sent a message to the Ammonites that said, We give up. Tomorrow you can do whatever you want to us. Saul and his army arrived the next morning just like he said they would. 
Saul divided his army into three sections. Together, the army snuck up on the Ammonites and attacked. The Ammonites were not prepared for Saul's massive army and lost. The battle was very long. The battle started in the morning and ended in the afternoon. By the time the afternoon came, most of the Ammonites were killed, and only a few Ammonites escaped. Saul's army defeated the Ammonites by the afternoon and saved the city by the afternoon, just like Saul said. After the battle ended, the people of Israel asked Samuel, Will Saul be our king? If there is anyone who does not like Saul, we will kill them. The people said this because they saw how great of a leader Saul was in battle, and the people saw how brave Saul was. Samuel said to the people of Israel, Instead of fighting and killing each other, let's celebrate together because we are victorious. Let us reunite the kingdom, and we can make Saul our king a second time. Saul agreed with Samuel, and they made that day a special day to God. Saul and the people of Israel sacrificed peace offerings to God, and everyone celebrated what had happened. Now that's what I call a party. Israel has a king, and he has led them to victory. The people are united, and everyone is getting along. The nation of Israel is strong, and God is on their side. What's not to celebrate? Today, we are introduced to some pretty mean bullies called the Ammonites. Their army was very big, and they thought they were the greatest. But when they threatened the nation of Israel, something pretty cool happened to Saul. He got angry. Now, this wasn't the bad kind of anger where you lose your temper, scream things you don't mean, or do something you regret, or call names. No, this was a good kind of anger. Is there really such a thing? Yes, there is. The Bible tells us that the Spirit of God came mightily upon Paul, and his anger burned hot. I can imagine Saul's face getting red, his muscles tensing up, and his teeth clenched tight. What do you think was making Saul so mad? Saul was experiencing what we sometimes call righteous anger. It's kind of like when Jesus got angry at the money changers in the temple for cheating and he flipped over the tables. Saul was angry at how disrespectful the Ammonites were being to God's people. They were threatening the Israelites, and on behalf of God, he did not like it. Saul was ready to fight. He wanted to defend his God and fight for God's people. And the Israelites were ready to fight too. Something happened to the people of Israel after Saul got so angry. The Spirit of God came upon them too, and they had what the Bible calls the fear of the Lord. Now, just like Saul's anger was not a bad anger, this fear was not a bad fear either. In fact, God's word tells us many times to fear God. Fearing God does not mean that we are scared of him and think he will try to hurt us somehow. Far from it. Fearing God means we know how big, strong, and powerful he is. So we want to be on his side. It means that we don't want to disappoint him and we want to live in a way that makes him proud. Fearing God means respecting Him, obeying Him, and recognizing how powerful He really is. In the Israelites' case, fearing God probably meant they feared what He might do to those Ammonites. They had confidence in their God and were ready to fight for Him. Can you imagine in your mind 330,000 men armed for battle? That's a pretty big army. And I love what happened next. Officials from other cities tricked the Ammonites into thinking that they were all giving up. Because of this, the Ammonites sat back and relaxed, thinking they had won and could do anything they wanted now. But boy, were they wrong. The next day, the army of Israel snuck in and attacked the Ammonites. And by the time the afternoon rolled around, the battle was over and Israel had come out on top. God's people were so happy and so glad to have Saul for their king. 
They had a big celebration and rejoiced over all God had done that day. Today, spend some time thinking about how big, awesome, holy, powerful, and strong our God is. When you do, you'll be experiencing the fear of God. And remember, if you ever feel angry because someone does something disrespectful to God, that's a good thing, and God can help you know what to do. Thanks for listening today. Next time, things are turning around again, but this time for the worse. Saul is impatient, and the Israelites are hiding in the bushes. Be sure to come back and hear all about it. Why? Because the Bible is the best story ever told. It's God's story to you, and it's all true. Love our podcast? Subscribe for the latest episodes and help kids and parents explore God's Word with Kids Bible in a Year. Thanks for listening to Pray.com's Kids Bible in a Year. For more inspiring stories and wisdom to last a lifetime, download the Pray.com app for free today. Thanks for listening to Kids Bible in a Year. I want to invite our adult listeners to check out my other show, Unapologetic, God's Truth on Today's Topics. It's unfiltered, important, inspiring, and we have awesome conversations and amazing guests such as Candace Cameron Bray, Vice President Mike Pence, Dr. Robert Jeffress, Shannon Bream, Maddie Pruitt, and so many others. We are helping you have conversations that empower you to have bold faith in a broken world. You'll be excited, inspired, and encouraged in your faith as you check out Unapologetic. Remember that you can tune in wherever you get your podcasts and on Pray.com.